Welcome to the Q Podcast. Q is about conversation. If we're really concerned about ending poverty, we've got to be more concerned about creating justice. Our cultural products as Christians need to both defy and resonate with the culture. And God's doing amazing things. His church is expanding. His church is growing. It's not what's the purpose of my life. It's what is the purpose that's been assigned. Stay curious. Think well. Advance good. This is Q. Welcome to another edition of the Q Podcast. It's that season, and it's just so fun. This time of year, all the giving, all the thinking about others, and ways that we can be both grateful for all the good things in our life and also generous. And that's why today's conversation and the interview I'm about to do is one I think that's going to inspire you. It's just another one of those amazing stories of somebody who turned a burden that they had into purpose, and it's making a difference in the world. And that person that I'm going to talk to is Bob Dalton. He's an activist, speaker, entrepreneur, but he's working on a problem in our society that so many of us see on a daily basis and don't always know how to solve it. And he was in that same place. And it's it's the issue of homelessness. What do you do about homelessness? Is that something the government has to take care of? Can the church be more involved? Are you supposed to open your doors and welcome people into our own homes? It's probably some combination of all of that. But what I love about Bob is he took a simple step, and by taking a simple step, he created something called Sackcloth and Ashes. And Sackcloth and Ashes is a company that makes blankets. You're going to hear all about it. But man, such an inspiration. And I'm excited for you to get to meet him. The fun thing, too, about these blankets, which are just beautiful. I mean, I love these blankets. We have them in our home and just love using them. But it's giving a blanket away to a homeless shelter in your area. So we're going to get all into how it works. But a cool thing that's happening right now, if you follow Q, if you're listening to this podcast, if you have not made plans yet to come to the Q Conference, April 22nd to 24 in Nashville, Tennessee. We want you there, and we want you there so badly that we want to give you one of these blankets when you buy tickets for you and a friend or more. So two or more tickets to come to the Q Conference. You can go to qideas.org slash 2020. So qideas.org slash 2020, and you can see all about the event, Currently, the topics, the presentations we have scheduled for this year. But as you know, if you've been before or if you've heard about Q, every year pulling together scores of conversations around the topics that are critical for you as a leader to know how to process, how to think well about. We want you to meet the people who have been thinking ahead for you on many of these fronts. And we know in 2020, the divisiveness has ratcheted up. It's a political year. There's a lot happening that we want you to be prepared for. But we also want you to be courageous and bold and brave and know how to lead. And one of the ways we lead is creating culture. And that's what Bob did. And you're going to hear his story about that. But I just want to throw a little plug in. When you hear his story, just know you can go buy his blankets at sackclothandashes.com. We totally encourage you to do that to support your local homeless shelter. But then in addition, if you buy two or more tickets to Q and we want you there, We're not only going to send you that. We've got a whole bundle of awesome gifts that we want to give you this Christmas season. So check it out at qideas.org slash 2020. And right now, let's listen into my conversation with Bob Dalton. Bob, I'm so excited for people listening to this podcast to meet you. You've been such an inspiration to so many. And so thanks for being with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Your story is so inspirational, as so many people's stories that I just love to hear are. They come out of a deeply personal experience, a burden that took place in your life, something that you had to really walk through. And now on the other side of it, man, amazing to see how this is helping so many people not have to live through some things you lived through. So so let's go back to the beginning. I want our listeners to better understand just your story, like how, how the beginnings of this all started for you and how the idea of of the homeless became an issue that you just decided, I got to do something. Yeah, basically um, at 24 years old, this is back in 2013, I was a part of a ministry called Young Life. And I'd been doing Young Life for about five years at that point from 19 to 24. And I was just transitioning out of that organization and trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life. And for any young 20s, you know, out there, it's like, that's a really 
a high pressured place to be in your life is trying to figure mm-hmm. out what you're supposed to do. And so I'm transitioning out of that organization and applying for jobs. Nobody's getting back to me. And at the same time in that, in that time of my life, my mom was going through an incredibly difficult time. Uh, she had lost her mother and her brother. And for anybody who lost family members, it's, in, you know, it took a massive toll on her and she spiraled downhill and ended up drinking, losing her home and just found herself in a really dark place in her life. And her mom and her brother were like her pillars in her life. She didn't have a man in her life. So anytime she needed like financial or emotional support, she would go to her big brother or she'd go to her mom. So when she lost them, it was like survival mode, like crisis mode. So she ended up calling me up one day and she's like, Bob, I'm doing it. I'm going to move across the United States and start my life over. So she booked a one-way plane ticket from Oregon to Florida. She sold everything she had on Craigslist and she brought a suitcase and two pairs of interview clothes. And that's all she took with her. She flies over to Florida. She thinks her aunt's going to take her in. Her aunt doesn't take her in. So she ends up sleeping on beaches and benches. And so that completely changed my paradigm of how I view and understand homelessness because I was the guy that would drive by people on the street and whisper under my breath, go get a job. And I had very little understanding or compassion toward people on the street. Like my attitude was like, the irony was I considered myself an activist, but homelessness was never even on the list of issues that I wanted to help because my attitude toward it was like, work a little harder or you know, you probably found yourself on the side of the street because of choices you've made in your life, you know? So when my mom ended up in that situation, it blew my bias up because she's the hardest working woman I know. And it was through her journey that inspired me to call my local homeless shelters and ask what they needed. And they all said blankets. Hmm. Well, listen, I mean, I want to pause there. It seems like we all make up a lot of stories about how people get to where they are. We recently were with Malcolm Gladwell. You know, he wrote this book called Talking to Strangers, where he really delves into how much we tend to just quickly judge and assess people based on our perception, our experience, and and how many times we just get it completely wrong, right? That that somebody's in a situation and we think we know how they got there. I mean, interesting to me, just in my understanding of homelessness is partly you know, it's, it's due to sometimes a family member being lost. Like you just described, like that's a big reason people become homeless. They've, they've lost either the breadwinner in the family. Maybe they've lost a job. They've had some sort of a disaster. And because of that, they find themselves literally without a place to live seeking help. And they're independent enough to know they don't want to be a burden to people. So they go, I'll just figure it out myself. And, and they just find themselves in this situation that, is easy to just label as somebody who made some bad choices and they're going the wrong path in life versus going, man, this is a child of God who needs a lot of love and help right now. And this is what I love about your story is the thing you did, like you called homeless shelters. You didn't just assume you knew how to solve this problem or how you were going to fix the entire homeless situation, but you were like, I can do one thing. And and what was their answer? Blankets. Yeah. at At the time they were like, you know, I mean, I'm sure I think their first answer was money, but I was like, oh, well, <laughs> what's the second option? <laughs> but, um, right. but yeah, they needed blankets. I, and you know, I called the next shelter up and they're like, yeah, we need blankets. And I, it was like right in the heart of 2013 mm-hmm. winter time, you know? Yeah. So, and so, so they say, Hey, we need blankets. And what did you do? Did you kind of look around your apartment and you're like, do I have an extra blanket? I mean, what was your mental process at that point of how you were going to get involved? Yeah. So I was familiar with the one for one business model that Blake and Tom did a great job pioneering. And the one for one model had been around for about eight years at that point. And in my opinion, I was like, I wanted to adopt that model, but I felt like Tom's was kind of phasing out of relevancy at that point because they rode a really long wave of being the first. And I knew that if I was going to adopt the one for one model, I needed to do something fresh and new that was different than what Tom's did. And that's why I wanted to evolve it and making it local. And instead of sending a second product overseas somewhere, it was like, how can we address 
bring some positivity and give people an opportunity to make a difference down the street from where they live. Right. Cause, and, cause in the Tom's, in the Tom's model, you know, Blake was a part of our first queue in 2007 when he was launching that concept and, and the church was really getting involved at that point and, and interested in, and it's amazing to see how that story played out. But to your point, it was buy a pair of shoes for yourself, give a pair of shoes away, but that, that pair of shoes you're giving away, you're likely never going to see where that goes. It's not necessarily solving a problem that you're seeing on a daily basis, but it is a problem and it, and it's done a lot of good. But you, you said, look, my iteration on that, my innovation on that is what if we could actually see the result locally? Yeah. And I think it's so important to take the conversation to a local standpoint. Like we, Princeton did a study where when we drive by people on the street, we process them as objects. And so we have a lot of work to do right here in the United States with certain issues that we've been neglecting or judging. And I thought this was a simple way to bring some positive attention to people in your local community. Like what could you do in your local community to make a difference? And that's why I named it Sackcloth and Ashes. So Sackcloth and Ashes is ancient Jewish symbolism, which means mourning and repentance. So the idea was every time somebody wraps themselves in a sackcloth and ashes blanket, it symbolizes mourning over the homeless population and repentance by contributing to a homeless shelter in your area. So it's your change of perspective. It's your act of doing something positive in your community. You know, I wanted this brand to be something that empowered people to do something locally. Yeah. First of all, when when I saw your blankets, because I mean, when I think about the kind of blankets that maybe I would buy that would provide a blanket to a homeless shelter. I'm thinking the blankets are probably going to be kind of cheap. I mean, thin. I don't know what they're going to necessarily look like. I'm doing it because of the cause, right? Because I'm motivated to solve a problem and I and I love the innovation of the idea. But when you lay your eyes on these blankets from sackcloth and ashes, I mean, the amount of time and energy you've put into aesthetic design, sourcing materials, the weight of it, the pricing of it, like completely affordable. Like you can hardly imagine how buying this blanket is going to provide one to, to somebody in need. But talk a little bit about that and why you said, look, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it right. Yeah. And initially when I was starting, I didn't have a clue of how to go about it. I launched with a sewing machine and a big roll of black fleece fabric from Joann's. Were you making blankets? Like <laughs> I, was, you, I tried. You, you had like your foot on the pedal and watching your thumb. <laughs> I did. I, I, I tried. I made the, I kind of like half made the first sackcloth and ashes blanket. <laughs> and then I realized I can't sew. And so I had to find somebody in my community that could sew. And her name was Tammy. And she was this uh, awesome lady that was making blankets already, keeping them in her car and passing them out to people on the street. So I'm like, hired Tammy. You're my first hire. You're my first employee. And uh, Tammy started making me blankets and I would box up those blankets and, and sell blankets straight out of my trunk and walk into shops and get into as many shops as I possibly could. And June 1st, 2014, sackcloth went live with absolutely no business experience, no marketing experience. And my only marketing and business strategy was to post on Instagram once a day. So I'm posting on Instagram once a day. And in November of 2014, this is five months into business, Instagram emailed me and they're like, Bob, we love your story. We love what you're doing. We want to feature you on Instagram's Instagram account. And I had, I had no idea what that even meant. I'm like, that sounds cool. Like, you know, I look up, I look up Instagram's Instagram. They had 42 million followers. So I'm like, oh, man. oh my God. <laughs> so, so I, I email them back. I'm like, how long do I have to prepare for something like this? And they're like, we're posting about you tomorrow. And it was the day before Black Friday. Oh, no. Oh. So, I, so, so I called Tammy up. I'm like, Tammy, like, how many blankets do we got? <laughs> you know, and she's like, 20. I'm like, Tammy, you got to get cracked on those blankets. We just, we're about to get featured on Instagram. She's like, Insta what? I'm like, never mind, Tammy. You know, just start so late. So we got featured on Instagram. That blew us up overnight. Um, and that was kind of our Kickstarter. And then I grew the brand on social media for four years. So over that four years as the brand was developing and growing and the vision was forming, the team was being built. That's where we started to move our production over to, uh, I found a great source in uh, Italy. 
And so we make all of our fabric in Italy now, and that fabric then gets shipped to our production hub in Oregon, where we uh, hire refugees to do our production. Wow. And so our fabric is made out of 100% recycled materials, uh, eco-friendly, good for the environment. And and then we have we keep everything in house. We want our goal is to take a microscope to our entire production process from start to finish and know that we're making a difference in every avenue. To address the donation blankets that you brought up, um, the donation blankets change based on the need of where we're donating. And so if it if it's a homeless shelter, we usually donate a twin size fleece blanket because they're easy to wash. And they have a high turnover rate in those locations where they have like hundreds of people staying there every night. So they usually request a twin size fleece blanket. If it's a men's or a women's program, we donate a wool blanket um, for men and women that are in like a 12 month program that are going to be staying there longer term. And then we also donate a, a wool blanket that you see on our website to foster care agencies or, or child family programs where they're in there longer term as well. So if they're in a long term program, they usually get a blanket similar to ones that we're selling on our website. If they're men or women's shelters, we usually donate twin size fleece blankets so that they can easily wash them and dispose of them. Yeah, and um, the prices are so reasonable. I mean, I'm looking at your website, Cotton Tempo. Okay, that's my favorite. Love it. The grays, the blacks, the kind of oatmeal color, $89. I mean, like completely reasonable pricing. Camp Coast, that's another favorite, $109. Royale Black. 109. I mean, you guys are creating beautiful products that anybody would buy just for themselves. And and your prices are competitive with that. But then people who do this are actually contributing. And and it's not just that they're donating a, you know, if you if you live in in the middle of of uh, Missouri and you're you're buying one of these blankets, the blanket you're donating is not going to LA. Tell them where the blanket goes and, and how that works. Yeah. So we donate based on zip code. So if you live in Austin, Texas and you buy a blanket we'll send a blanket to a homeless shelter in Austin, Texas. If you live in Tampa Bay, Florida, and you buy a blanket, we'll send a blanket to a homeless shelter in Tampa Bay, Florida. And so we're donating based on zip code. And you can visit our website at sackcloth.com slash shelters. And you can type in your zip code and the map zooms into your area where you're located. And it shows you all of the homeless shelters that we give to in your community. Wow. Yeah. See, I love it. I love the transparency. I love the model. I love the intentionality around the entire process, the excellence and the beauty that you're doing this with. And what's been cool in watching your story, Bob, as it's kind of progressed is how much the world has started to pay attention. You talked about Instagram. I remember you were at Sundance and I remember watching one of your stories because you do a pretty fun job of documenting all these different places you go, the people you partner with, like Kevin Bacon and others who've gotten involved in the story. And it's just fun to see. It's like this is a win for everybody. Like it's hard to imagine you'd have anybody criticizing you as you as you go forward and take this forward. It's like one of those just winning ideas all the way around. So congratulations on that. But I, I do want to get into this because as an entrepreneur, as somebody who's leading this, you've been doing this for many years. There there are a lot of ups and downs. I mean, this isn't this isn't always easy. I mean, we can look back now and go, man, this is beautiful. Everything's great about it. But the reality is, as you go on a journey as an entrepreneur, I mean, you even said this at Q, you said entrepreneurship is a journey of faith, right? You you know how much faith becomes a big part of being able to take those next steps and having vision and hope. So take us a little inside Bob Dalton for a moment. And what has this journey been like for you? And how has it built your faith in people, in God, in the process? Yeah, I'd say one of the probably one of the biggest ways that I've evolved personally has been I lived I grew up without a father. So I lived a lot of my life um, kind of like me against the world, like always kind of feeling like I'm competing with everybody else and that like nobody really wants the best for me. So I got to prove them wrong. Um, or all the people that say no or, you know, I experienced some sort of rejection then I'm just like, my attitude is like, well, I'll show you, you know? And I lived a lot of my life like that. And I've, I've probably lived the first three, four years of sackcloth and I, building sackcloth and ashes with that mentality. And I feel like I've evolved from building something in spite of my quote unquote, unquote haters, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now I'm building this vision for everybody that has believed in me. And 
it's been such a huge kind of positive transformation in the way that I'm approaching my entire life where I'm no longer trying to build something in spite of or to show somebody wrong. I'm building because I know that I have a community of people that believe in me, believe in what I'm doing. And most importantly, that I, I just feel like I, I really am doing what God wants me to do and I am where God wants me to be. And there's not a better place to be in your life than truly knowing that. Yeah, um, that's beautiful, man. I love it. And and talk a little bit about just your goal. I mean, you've got this new campaign called Blanket the United States. What What is it that you're hoping to see happen? Yeah, we launched the campaign in 2018. And our goal with the campaign is to donate 1 million blankets to homeless shelters by 2024. And we're going to do that by partnering with people individually who buy a blanket from our website. We'll send a blanket to their local homeless shelter. And we're going to do that by partnering with companies that want to give a blanket as a gift to their employees or their customers or their clients. They can now give a blanket and make a difference in their local homeless shelters. And so we have companies all around the nation that have stepped up and are participating in blanket the United States and participating in specifically blanketing their states. Um, we blanketed um, Oregon with Subaru. Uh, Subaru bought 2,500 blankets in Oregon. Every Subaru purchased, it comes with the blanket. And we were able to donate 2,500 blankets to homeless shelters in Oregon. Shortly after that, the company bought 5,000 blankets and we blanketed California. And Cost Plus World Market bought 15,000 blankets, and we blanketed Texas, Colorado, Washington. And now we have companies all around the nation. It's been awesome to see like them wanting to use their platforms and their voice to make a difference in their local state. So I have the privilege now to, um, about every week I'm on a plane going to a different homeless shelter in the United States, where we do what's called a blanket drop, where we go to a shelter and not only do we pass out blankets, but we get to invite CEOs of companies we're partnered with and celebrities into these blanket drop experiences to tour, to learn, to ask questions, and to highlight the solutions that are being created on a grassroots level. And my ultimate goal with this campaign is not just to donate a million blankets, but it's to connect people and organizations that have a powerful voice, platform, resources, and connect them with the people in the organizations on a grassroots level that are showing up every single day, putting in the work, and the media is not doing a good job of highlighting the solutions in our society right now. So I'm calling business leaders, our business owners, I'm calling leaders, politicians, influencers, celebrities to use their voice and their platform to highlight the people in the organizations that are showing up and doing incredible work in our communities around the United States. And that is our number one goal for Blanket the United States. The blankets yeah, are it. just a third third party object that's connecting everybody together, and it's and it's been awesome to watch. Well, I love it, and I love that you're raising more and more not just awareness about a problem. I think people are pretty aware of the problem and and how it's growing right now. But I think you're giving everybody a way to take part in it and to be a part of the solution and to partner with you guys. And so sackcloth and ashes. Dot com. You can all learn so much more about the story. Watch some of these stories and the videos and the blanket drops. And as we head into this Christmas season where we're all remembering how much we have to be grateful for, but also recognizing those less fortunate, consider how you might play a part in this and partner with Sackcloth and Ashes and let this be a part of your Christmas time and your new year and the way that you think about your giving at the end of this year. Well, thank you, Bob, for being with us. Thanks. We're going to be cheering you on as you continue to lead this campaign into the coming years. Thank you, Gabe. Thanks for having me, man. Well, I hope you've enjoyed listening to that story. I mean, I love everything about what Bob's doing. Every part of this process is inspiring. And I think for any of us who are considering how can we make a difference, it can be that simple. And and what now may look like an obvious idea, this was not an idea. This was... This was nothing until somebody took action on the idea. And so I hope you'll take action. I want to encourage you, go to sackcloth and ashes.com. Buy this as a Christmas present for somebody you love. 
Buy it for somebody in your family so you can take advantage of enjoying this blanket. Give it away because when you do that, you're actually helping the homeless shelter in your community. And then in addition to that, just remember, we want to see you at Q2020, April 22nd to 24. If you go to qideas.org 2020 right now, special pricing, special gifts, including a sackcloth and ashes blanket when you buy two tickets or more. So go buy two tickets, four tickets, buy a table of eight like so many of the leaders do with us, and then fill it with your friends over the next 60 days. Invite them to come just dedicate three days to thinking together, to learning together, to getting ahead of the curve on the conversations that are coming your way so that you can lead well and you can help bring others along into a flourishing life. We hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas. This is Gabe Lyons looking forward to our next conversation. 